Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the live. Oh, stupid thing. Tilt up. There you go. It's going to be a big day today. Uh, we're going to be doing an end to end longitudinal demo with our CTO Harold. It's going to be great. Um, we're also going to be announcing a video contest that all of you can participate in, even if you have a comma two or a comma three. Uh, but first off, something very exciting. Hi, Sam. Welcome, everybody. Something very exciting right here. These boxes right here are the final comma threes that were in our backlog, meaning we're fully caught up and we have comma threes in stock now for the first time ever. Uh, these are all boxes for comma threes, thousands of them. <laughs> boxes everywhere. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> I'll say this, we've shipped over 500 comma threes now, which is a huge milestone, super awesome. Uh, very proud of the production team for all the hard work they've been doing. Uh, let's actually go take a quick peek at uh, some of the assembly going on here. So over here are some finished uh, comma three skeletons. They just need the back cases on them and the screens. So, I mean, they're gonna be ready to go on stress tests later today. Over here, we got some parts laid out. <laughs> and over here, Juan is uh, making one right now. Check it out. Gets a little quiet on Fridays uh, because everyone comes in very early and leaves very early uh, in the production team. But uh, yeah, we got a full house back there working on comma threes and we have some ready to ship. So if you buy a comma three today, expect to see a shipping notification on Monday, uh, which is super great. And here's some on the stress test. We've already taken a bunch of them off. Um, yeah, Brevin, you did talk to Juan at Comic-Con. He was, he was there on the booth. But yeah, here are all these beautiful comma threes. They all look great. I love the test because we can check out all the cameras in full screen, super cool. So that's the narrow camera, that's the 185 degree rear camera, and the 185 degree front camera. And something that people haven't seen before yet is this uh, new contraption that we've built. It actually is just a 45 degree angled mirror. So when we're testing camera focus, it shows the roof. So you can see there's the roof and we use those lines to check the focus on all the devices. Uh, so that is great. So we don't have any devices with bad focus going out there. And uh, yeah, we've been doing that practically the whole time. But let's announce the video contest. I think some of you are here for this. Most of you are here for the end-to-end -end longitudinal demo. It's very, very early days with that. But this video contest is very exciting. All right, we're going to set this thing up like a tripod. So I don't know how many people know where I'm from, uh, but I used to be doing open pilot videos on my personal channel before I got hired at Kama. So back in 2018, uh, they did a video contest where they asked people to describe what open pilot was. And that's what I did. I made a video, entered the contest myself. I was in uh, Montreal at the time. And I won, which is hilarious. So, you know, it's funny that I'm announcing the video contest here three years later. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was, can you believe back in 2018, we had a giraffe, a panda, and an eon? Look, they were all separate. They weren't all integrated into the beautiful car harness we have today. So, Back then, <laughs> I remember Mr. Cole also had a great video back in that contest. Uh, back then when I won this contest, I got $500. So Alex thought of the brilliant idea to adjust for inflation. So the winner of this video contest, let's see what they're going to make. Well, they're going to get $544.46. Nice, and there's actually gonna be two winners. So let me talk about the first category that you could win. And by the way, this video contest is gonna last for two weeks. So your time starts now. 
You have two weekends to do it. And after the two weekends, we're gonna come back here to judge uh, the videos on a live in two weeks from today. So first category is uh, comma three. You know, there's over 500 people who have comma threes now, and this is the category for you if you have one of those devices. Uh, so basically what we want is we want to, you know, hear from you, hear what you think about the device and uh, how you like it. So, I, you know, I'm sure a lot of you love your comma threes. A lot of you upgraded from comma two devices. You know, tell us in a video why that is, what you like about the comma three, what you're excited about. There's a lot of exciting things in the future for the comma three, you know, such as end-to-end -end longitudinal is, is a, a dream that we're working on research. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of exciting things. Stop lines, some of you may have seen our tweets on stop lines. Uh, essentially, anytime a human stops, the model is gonna predict a stop line. So it's not working super 100% of the time yet, which is why we're not shipping it yet, but we're working on it. And if that works, we're gonna have red light stop signs on comma three. Uh, yeah, George isn't in the office today. So that's category one. Just talk about, those were your tweets, JS. You know, you might be able to win one of these, uh, win this video contest. <laughs> so that is the first main goal. That's the main uh, event. If you have a comma three, I recommend entering in that contest. Just talk about it, you know, make a review video on it. Do whatever you want. Uh, let's talk about some creators on the platform uh, that are making great stuff already. That's me. <laughs> Logan Legrand, of course, I'm sure many of you know Logan's videos. He makes a lot of great stuff and he made a great comparison video of comma three versus comma two. So he might have a good chance of winning this if he ends up making something. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who are just making some good videos, just showing their like daily commutes. I think these are great videos and we definitely would consider one of these, just like talking about your experience with the Comma 3 and, and how it helps driving. Um, you know, here's someone named Comma Drive doing a great video. This isn't a Comma 3, so they can't win that category, but Harold's gonna talk about the next category. And of course, First, there's uh, Let It Drive, who's been doing some great content as well, also might be able to win that other category. Cool. So thank you to everybody making content on the platform. All right, now we're gonna go talk to Harold, our CTO, and he's gonna explain the second one. Keep in mind both of these, if you win in your category, get $544.46, which you could use towards a comma three if you want, uh, or for anything. Harold. Yes, hello. Hello. Hello, guys. I have to go, go this way for the mic. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> All right, hello, what's guys. our second category that anyone can enter in if they have a comma device? Well, the second category is just uh, videos of laneless, doing impressive things, just impressive end-to-end -end lateral, uh, lateral things with open pilot. For those of you who uh, don't drive with laneless, if you uh, turn on the toggle in settings, it'll, uh, It'll drive end to end. It will try to mimic human driving behavior, and uh, that can lead to a lot cooler and smoother uh, lateral control than uh, than using the lane lines, which uh, is by default. Um, I saw your scene uh, popped in there. Hey, yeah, hey, scene. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, I think that's a, it's a, a biggest achievement at, at research is uh, getting good lateral control by uh, just learning from human driving. And so, if you guys can make some content uh, showing that, that'd be great. We can uh, go for a drive now as well and uh, yeah. just do some end-to-end -end driving and see. Let's do it. Let's see how it goes. Um, yeah, so, you know, you think of my, uh, the laneless video I made just showing that unique behavior at an exit. Those are the kind of little subtle things that laneless does really well. And we're going to have a new video coming out soon about laneless going through intersections, which I think it does amazing at intersections. It's the reason why the, if the intersection curves, will still uh, predict the correct thing and go through the intersection. All right, going in the Civic. Ready. We have a traffic light in the office, yes we do. <laughs> it works now, right, Harold? Yeah, it works. The traffic light will uh, go red if the tests are broken. So uh, 
immediately starts stressing out if you see like a big red uh, red glow in the hallway. Yep. It's, uh, keeps you on your toes. Here's the comma three. It looks so beautiful. Look at that. All right. So this is uh, go driving with lamp. That allows us to get very smooth policy without ever really manually, you know, writing anything about how to take a turn or how to uh, how to go through an intersection. But it ends up being super smooth. And uh, we want to do the same thing for longitudinal, and so that's a that's a whole project. And and the start of that is just uh, having some some end to end on the on the device and uh, seeing how it does. So it sees here the the red stoplight should stop here, and yep, comes Check to that a out. stop. Uh, so that's yeah, fully end to end. Um, it's now stopped at the stoplight, and the uh, red stoplight is probably not in view, so it's not going to see when it turns green. It's probably just going to be stopped here forever, so we'll take over whenever it turns green. But this is just kind of a proof of concept to show that the model does understand certain things uh, about longitudinal just from understanding how humans drive. So um, the light turned green, I, I took over again. Here we'll uh, come behind the stopped car and it should come to a smooth human-like stop. And, that uh, felt very human-like. Yeah, it seems... Yeah, so this is the thing about the end-to-end -end stuff is, uh, you know, we've been working quite a long time on, you know, just like lead policy and that kind of stuff. And, and there's still a lot of things about it that don't seem that smooth or that enjoyable. And a lot of that's just because it's very hard to hand-tune that. Um, you know, it's all these different situations, different types of, you know, accelerating and braking are, are more smooth. Um, but it's hard to hand code that. But if you just tell it to drive like a human, like I didn't uh, take over for this turn, I just helped the steering a little bit. And I mean, it's very human-like. And hopefully by using this kind of machine learning and by mimicking the human behavior, we can just start getting end longitudinal policies that keep improving as our models improve, as opposed to us like having to hand code, you know, all these new situations. And here it's uh, accelerating behind this lead. One of, one of the issues we have with uh, the normal lead policy is that it doesn't appropriately accelerate when a lead car pulls away or um, it, it'll accelerate too hard if you're just slowly trying to come up to cruise speed. That's just because it's not very aware of like context and stuff. Um, and so hopefully by leveraging the end-to-end -end output, we can improve that. I just took over here because the model wasn't going to see that you were making a turn, so I probably wouldn't have uh, dealt with that very smoothly. Here we're gonna go on the highway, see how it does here. So this is uh, now end-to-end -end longitudinal and end-to-end -end lateral control. The mall is just doing what it thinks a human would. And we'll see how it goes. Someone said pre-recorded. <laughs> it's definitely not pre-recorded. I'm sure we'll see several instances of that manifest. That proved that. <laughs> yeah, this is our torque modded Honda Civic <laughs> with a pedal, right? Uh, with a pedal, yeah. yeah. So as you can see, it gets a lot closer to the leads than uh, the normal policy would. That's not exactly what we want out of it, but I mean, this is just part of, you know, this experimental stuff just to kind of see what it wants to do and, and see how that goes. Um, but yeah, this is uh, kind of the first run of this. We haven't really worked on any kind of end-to-end -end longitudinal stuff for, I don't know, years ago. So yeah. This is the start. But yeah, again, so speed control here is uh, being done by the model. Um, there is some limits to how close we get to a lead because sometimes it get uncomfortably close, so I put some limit in there, but that's not really what's causing the following distance now. It's, it's really just doing, uh, doing what the model wants at this point. And hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be able to do some slowdown for exit soon and, and, and kind of see that. The model has some basic understanding of what's going on. Yeah, everyone's saying it looks very chill. Yeah, here it's very yeah, getting quite close here, so I'm not sure it's gonna slow down the time. Yeah, I'll just uh, slow down myself for that one. Yeah, as you can see, it's still definitely not pre-recorded. Uh, Dell definitely makes plenty of mistakes. It's more of a proof of concept than anything else. Yes. So unlike end-to-end -end longitudinal, end-to-end -end lateral is already very good, and you can you know enable it on your own device today and, and give it a shot. So you know, I think that's what I really want to see in these uh, videos that people are making is just show it doing cool stuff because it. It does every day. Like you know, we drive it every day, and it, it does really amazing, um, you yeah. know, really human-like turns and things like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, the end-to-end -end lateral stuff—it's kind of state-of-the-art machine learning and self-driving stuff. But uh, I mean, you can experience it just the same way we do. Like, it's the state-of-the-art, but it's also shipped, so you know, I don't need. 
we, the stuff we use at Coma is exactly the same as what's, uh, what's on the public branches. So if you want to see the state of the art of what we're working on, just install, uh, install OpenPilot. Yeah. And enable the lameless and it's, it should be just magical as what we use internally. There's no secret good open pilot. You can just try it on your own device. <laughs> Someone asked when intra and uh, lateral is moving to beta. Entra and lateral? Yes. Oh, I see. As in, uh, like, I guess the default yeah. toggle. So one of the big issues we have with uh, end to end lateral is it's, it's a little bit less robust. So if you would move a little bit too much to the left or too much to the right, um, it's not going to recover very quickly. Um, and so what that means is that if there's errors in controls, like if, and, and what's happening, what we have, the problem we're trying to fix is that if you're in bank turns, just the way the vehicle dynamics works is you're going to slide a little bit down the bank of the road into the turn. Um, and this effect exists both with lane lines and with laneless, but it's stronger with laneless because of the less recovery pressure. So we're trying to fix that so that the cars are robust to that. And once that's fixed, then I think overall laneless should just be much better than with lane lines. So hopefully that's that's all we need to do. Yeah. So that's when uh, that toggle might change to be default. Yeah, exactly. Someone asked when this is planned, if it's planned for 1.0 or later. <laughs> uh, what is the end-to-end -end longitudinal stuff? Or, or the uh, toggle? Hang on. Well, first, let me talk about the contests one more time because Alex came in. So basically, we have two categories for all those watching who are just tuning in. The uh, first category is comma three related. So you know anything uh, about your comma three, like a review of it, how it compares to your previous comma two. Those videos would be really great. And obviously, the higher quality of the video, the more chance you could win. Uh, so that's category one. And then category two is anything about uh, using laneless on your comma device. So that can be, you know, an Eon, a comma two or a comma three. And uh, yeah, just showing off cool stuff that the driving model does on laneless mode, which is when it has this red line. That's how you can tell uh, it's on laneless mode. And, uh, you know, it does a lot of cool stuff goes through intersections, takes exits very human-like. You can see an example video on our channel right now of something cool that Laneless does. That's the kind of video we're looking for, just like showing off some cool Laneless stuff. So, and both the, those categories, the prize is $544.46, which is $500 from 2018 adjusted for inflation. <laughs> so, can you make a video, Harold? Does this count? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't know if this counts. Maybe if I find something cool. Yes. Yeah, one of the type of things. Yeah, I think that's most impressive, you know, when it's going through intersections and makes correct decisions uh, uh, that, you know, any any naive policy with lane lines wouldn't do. I mean, it continues to amaze me how, you know, we don't really tell it anything or don't really specifically tell the model to do anything, but it just... It can, it can make things just seem so superhumanly smooth just by mimicking human driving. It's pretty, it's pretty astonishing. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, we can uh, want to get on off ramp here and see if uh, yeah, this thing's going to slow down. Sure, let's try it. <laughs> so I, I did notice that uh, I was trying to make some tweaks that it would uh, respect the lead speed, the cruise speed, but it doesn't seem to be doing that at all. So. There might be some disengages here, but uh, let's see. We're gonna go off the off ramp here. Let's see what it does about it. Oh, it still seems to be going very fast. Uh, let's uh, help it out a little bit, slow down a little bit here because that's a little bit too extreme. Yes. So I'll see how it does here, whether it. Uh... <laughs> uh... Yeah, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit late on the brake there. It's, uh... <laughs> I we'll have to give it another chance. Early days, early days. <laughs> early days for sure. <laughs> Good uh, forward collision warning that the model did, though. Yeah, huh? yeah that's, that was a model forward collision warning there. So it uh, it goes off if it predicts very hard brakes. So uh, so that part works. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, let's see. Let's see if uh, there's anything interesting here. So I mean, you can see that the stop and go and the way it leaves from the from the lights all you know that's that's relatively human kind of stuff so that's cool little, yeah, that was neat you were engaged during that turn and it yeah. you know held 
12 miles an hour while you were turning and now you went straight it's picking it up all right so we got a traffic light coming up there with no lead we'll see uh we'll see if it if it thinks that's an important thing to stop for i hope so uh, <laughs> oh check that out wow it hesitates a that's little impressive bit, but uh there we go wow oh, and green well that's out of view it's out of view yeah, so one of the things that's still holding this back is, you know, it's it's uh, a lot of the, the the lights and stop signs are out of view when you're at them. So the model kind of gets there, then stops, and then it kind of loses context. So uh, yeah, we're gonna have to. Doesn't seem to want to go very fast in this road. It <laughs> doesn't like this road, does it? I think maybe uphills uh, make it a little bit lazy. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we can uh, increase the view soon, and then and then those those uh, the models become more context aware of that kind of stuff. So. Guys, have any questions about uh, just end to end lateral in general? Anything about that or anything? Yeah, like let us know. Devices? Any any questions about the contest? What kind of videos you make? That is all fair game. Uh, someone asked what branch this is on. You know, highly experimental. Yeah, I think extreme if you can't find intention. It, you probably shouldn't be using. You it. know, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> no, this is a it's purely an experimental branch that just kind of allows us to do some very basic tests on Yeah, uh, learn what the model knows, right? Yeah, I mean, in general, we don't really do any real-world testing for this kind of stuff. We try to write very comprehensive test suites so that we can simulate all the behavior. But every now and again, you kind of have to evaluate that the simulator behavior is similar to the real-world behavior. So that's really all we would ever do real-world testing for. You know, for anything practical, we, we kind of only train and uh, test in the simulator. It's just... The iteration time is so much faster, it's it's reproducible, and we can keep pushing on that kind of stuff. So. Uh, increase the view, someone said, sounds like wait for comma 4. The comma 3 can see 360 degrees. Yeah, so. the comma 3 can see plenty. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, we have to write the model and make sure that it's better. We've, we've done experiments in the past, and we actually didn't get any benefits from increasing the view size, so that's why we're... Uh, we're not really pushing on that right now because uh, there were still other bottlenecks holding back the performance of the model. But once it's clear that increasing the view will be the next thing to do, then, uh, then we'll work on that and ship that. Yes. Data bugs in the training and ground truth seem to be most of uh, most of our problems most of the time. So. Uh, someone was asking, how do you get it to stop for red lights and stop signs? If it was already end to end before, I think you're confusing end to end lateral and end to end longitudinal. So we've had end to end lateral as this toggle for a while, but end to end longitudinal is understanding uh, fully end to end the gas and the, the brakes that humans do, right? Is yeah, yeah, exactly. So we've shipped, I mean, behind the toggle, it, it does basically drive fully end to end for lateral. Um, and so that's basically just mimicking the human driving. Uh, but for longitudinal, what's currently shipped is still just using lead cars and um, and like the cruise speed and just some really basic logic. But we want to make that more intelligent too, so that it can eventually stop at stop signs and stop lights, and it can slow down for turns. Um, and it's just a it's a pretty big project, and it's something we're just like starting to really work on and, and working through all that yeah. stuff. Uh, a lot of people asking if it'll resume at green. If it's in the model box, that's the, the goal, right? I mean, in theory, yeah, in theory. If it's in the model box. Well, we're not quite sure what we're going to do with stop lines yet. So stop lines will probably be like the first kind of feature that's in this end-to-end -end longitudinal kind of group of things um, that will ship. And well, we'll have to do some experiments and see what the, what the best approach is there. Hopefully resume at green and then the stop signs. I mean, resuming is not that easy there, so we're not quite sure what we're going to do. Yeah. Again, uh, oh yeah, so to submit a video for the contest, uh, you know, tweet it at us or use hashtag OpenPilot on your video and uh, just title it with OpenPilot. And if it's uploaded in the next few weeks, I'm going to assume it's for the contest. So, you know, we'll peruse YouTube and uh, yeah, just upload the video to YouTube, you know, explaining what you're doing. Make sure, you know, it says OpenPilot somewhere or comma <laughs> three so I can find it. <laughs> um, so you know that's the goal and uh yeah for you know 544 dollars and 46 cents that's uh you know you're on your way to afford a comma three if you sell your comma <laughs> two that's another you know 500 dollars. you could get a comma three for like half off if you win the contest and sell your old that's hardware a good start this is a good start
not sure if there's much uh, anything else to say. Yeah. Or anything else we should talk about? Let's see, there's another. I think. Yeah, here's another, another light. light. Here. Let's uh, let's see what it wants to do. Oh, it's it's feeling like it's ready. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Wow. Alrighty, came to that. a smooth stop at this light. Uh, that's exactly where I would have stopped too. Yeah. It's right at the line. So yeah, the this line. is uh, the power of machine learning. We didn't tell anything, we just said drive like a human. And here it is. It's driving like a human. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be pretty magical once. If it would actually see the lights, someone would, would go and... Yeah. I think it would though, because, I mean, just of how... Uh, how clearly it seems to see the difference between the red and the green lights, and probably... If it was in the view, it would probably react immediately. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, we've also got some uh, some exciting updates to uh, driver monitoring coming. Yes. There was some, uh, noticed there was some performance with masked users that wasn't that great. And uh, we're seeing our driver monitoring team has been working on making sure the, the models also understand how masks work and that masks don't uh, don't ruin the performance of drive monitoring. So hopefully that will work out and we'll have some exciting updates for you um, by 0810. Oh, that's a little late breaking there. It's yeah. not very comfortable. <laughs> a lot of people being like, what about humans with road rage? The, the, whole, the whole point of, uh, you know, end to end is it's like, like a, it's like everybody's driving, right? Like, I don't know how to explain that. It's yeah. not like I mean, I do the crazy stuff. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's a common, uh, I mean, it's an intuitive thought to have about that, right? Is, you know, if you just drive like humans, then you're never going to be better than humans. But I think, uh, I don't think that's true. So you would only be, we drive like the, the model only learns to drive like the, the mean human or the me, the median of the distribution. So um, outlier behavior, like aggressive driving or kind of swerving around in the lanes kind of shouldn't be the behavior that the model learns to imitate. Um, that's one part. So we kind of expect the the, me, the the median of the distribution to be much better. I mean, you can kind of imagine it though as don't think of like asking just a random person to drive and see if you like that driving behavior, but ask a hundred or a thousand people to in every situation say how they would behave and then just take like the average or the most common answer. And then you should kind of exclude all these kind of outliers, which are like maybe too aggressive or... Um, too conservative or just generally mistakes and weird that's yeah. one part and, and the other part is we can also kind of steer it a little bit I means we can selectively use conservative drivers maybe for follow distance and stuff like that but i mean we're really not there yet driving like a human or like the average human would be not just better than open pilot is today but better than any self-driving system is anywhere in the world so um i think that's that's not really a not really a reason to not try to imitate human driving. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a good discussion. I, I saw the person who said that it was like joking, but it's still a good discussion. <laughs> a lot of people genuinely have that question. Um, yeah, I think it's a fair, if you say, you know, drive like a human, we all want it to be better than humans, right? But I think you think there's a clear path to get to superhuman by learning from humans. Yes. Uh, someone said, sorry, joining late. Is end-to-end -end long focused on slow down for turns and red lights and stop signs or more advanced things like follow distance, speed based on the scene, etc.? End-to-end <laughs> um, -end long just means, uh, you know, end-to-end -end all the time for all longitudinal control, which will be, uh, which includes all those things, which is, you know, stopping at stop signs, it's better, smarter lead policy, um, but we, we wouldn't be able to ship it like that probably for a variety of reasons. So we'll probably just want the models to understand how to behave like a human for end-to-end -end longitudinal. And then we can take parts of that and uh, try to ship those. Like for example, stop lines is one example of just a part of the longitudinal policy that we can try to ship, or maybe just smart follow distance, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so it's, it's the beginning, it's the start. And eventually there'll be a toggle once it's, you know, in a state where we want we feel like it's it's good enough to, to try out, just like end-to-end -end lateral right now is in a good state to try out. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to be a bit for a, t a toggle like that to come to your device, but we just wanted to give a taste on the future uh, because the future is 
winning. Yeah. <laughs> and it's coming. The future is coming. Yes. I mean, I just thought, you know, it's good for people to see what we're working on. You know, we're not, we're not just sitting idly by. We're trying things. We're working on it. And um, try to make it as good as we can, as fast as we can. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, some people keep asking about, like, what about all the cars that, you know, don't have radar, that, you know, like, like the Accord, for example. I think, you know, part of research, right, is, is working on some sort of fully vision-only solution for those vehicles, right? Yeah, so, I mean, we've been, tr I mean, I've been trying to do stuff with vision-only ACC. So far, there's still some issues. The, the model's really not that good at understanding that a car is slowing down in front of you if the brake lights aren't on. Um, and that's still kind of a blocker. Radar is very, very good at knowing the exact speed of the car in front of you. So that's a very easy way to know if the leads are slowing down and you can be very proactive in how you drive because of that. Um, and so far, we're still struggling to get the same things from vision. But the hope is that, you know, humans can drive just looking at the camera. So the model should be able to drive just fine too. It's just a matter of, uh, of writing the algorithm that uses the data correctly. And this is also part of why we're uh, working on the end-to-end -end longitudinal stuff, it really allows us to make sure the model understands as much as possible about the scene that's relevant to longitudinal behavior, and then we can, uh, you know, use that to tweak the policy or at least guide our efforts. If the end-to-end -end policy also has trouble with slowing down for uh, lead cars that just started braking, then we know we need to work on, on the model just understanding the scene rather than just the policy. Cool. Yeah, and we do have an Accord now, uh, and I'm sure we'll start using uh, Vision Only to be testing it out in yeah. the coming weeks, and uh, yeah. Uh, Fred asked why end to end likes to hug corners. That's the thing Harold talked about before, where uh, you're, you're better at explaining it than me. That's something you're working yeah. to fix, though. Yeah, I mean, most of the time if it's hugging corners is because most turns on highways are banked. This is to make it easier to drive around them. And banked turns cause you to kind of slip into the turn. Um, so they, they kind of make the car turn by itself, even if you weren't turning the steering wheel. Um, and that's not something that we compensate for well in open pilot. So we want to make open pilot understand that the road is banked and have the controls of the vehicle steering correct for that. So that it's not turning more than the model ever wanted to, which is what's happening now. Hopefully, if we fix that, then it won't do that anymore. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you notice on on a, you know non-bank roads, it's like very, very, very good. Yeah. So we'll we'll get there, and yeah, that's probably when the toggle will go away if it's it's good enough. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Um, just to do a quick, you know, recap on uh, the contest for those people who are interested. Oh. Look at that, we just turned on navigation, if it works. <laughs> yeah, did I press that correctly? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, oh, look at that. Is. So, has, navigation is just uh, purely directions so far, but, you know, eventually that's the start to something big. Navigate on open pilot in the future. Um, let's see, someone asked, have you trained on comma three data yet? Yeah, so the model that's uh, now in master that we're hoping to release, that one is trained on Comma 3 data. Um, it took us a little bit of time to get that up and running, but... Yes, and so far no models have uh, are trained on the wide camera for Comma 3. So that'll, you know, maybe be in the future. Yeah. We're just chilling. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, we saw some... Uh, I don't know if uh, we could do a slowdown for turn, if that we can... I don't know, this is kind of a random drive. I don't know where we're going, so yeah, I'm not sure if there'll be, <laughs> there'll be any turn. But we stopped for some uh, some red lights smoothly, so I hope that's, uh, I don't know, gives us some some hope that uh, at least the end-to-end -end models at least understand that red lights are something to stop for, green lights are something you shouldn't stop for. So it's, uh, it's the start of a big longitudinal project. Yes, and uh, yeah, the stop lines branch, you know, kind of works. And it's, yeah. it's kind of works, I'd say it works a little better than, than this, but also it's <laughs> less fully end-to-end, -end, so that makes sense. Yeah, this is uh, much more experimental. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you can, you know, try out the stop lines branch if you want to, and it'll probably stop for most red lights and, mm -hmm. and stop signs. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, yeah, so just to 
you know, reiterate, uh, we got a video contest going on. The way to enter is you just upload a video to YouTube uh, with hashtag OpenPilot or just name it like comma three open pilot and uh you have two weeks from today to make your videos and after the two weeks we're gonna judge them you know probably have alex here and you know a d maybe some diversity yeah. in the judging panel <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll get some voting we can get the cards yeah <laughs> we'll watch them at lunch or something yeah, exactly. um so there's two categories. First category is comma three. So for all those over 500 people who have comma threes, let us know how it is. You know, you can do a review video on it. Talk about the nav if you want. Not many people talk about the nav, but I mean, it works. It's pretty cool. You can input a destination on your phone and it uh, over LTE, it just pops right onto the comma three. So that's a cool feature not many people know about. Uh, so that's category one, just anything about the comma three how you like it, how it compares to the comma two in your opinion. Any of that stuff is fair game. Second category is laneless lateral control, which means, you know, the steering control. So you put on that toggle that uh, lets you disable the use of lane lines, you're in end-to-end -end lateral mode and it does some pretty cool stuff. Uh, you can see an example of those kinds of videos on this very channel uh, in the video I made. So. Coming out to another red light here. Let's see how it does. Oh, and slowing down. Look at that. A little bit far, but it's a little late. for the stop line at least. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm it's not a, making this up. It's real. It's real. <laughs> it's not very reliable, but that's that's the start. That's the start. And now we just iron out the bugs. Yes. And yes. Uh, Correct, Mark. The second category is for anybody. You can have an Eon, comma two, or comma three. Uh, you can, you know, just run uh, the uh, laneless toggle, and you can make a video on laneless. You don't have to have a comma three, but on the comma three one, I think you should have a comma three. Yeah, that totally <laughs> makes sense. Yes, uh, and they're now shipping. That's the big news. They're now shipping nice. limited stock right now. So, you know, if you buy one right now, I can guarantee. We're gonna ship it on Monday, but if you don't buy it now, you know, we'll see. <laughs> you might have to start having a wait list again, a little wait list. Yeah, get in before the other people do. Yes. Uh, so yeah, we've gotten through all the backlog. Everyone's gonna get their comma threes in the mail in the next few days who uh, was still in the backlog. So it's very exciting stuff. Uh, a lot of people are loving their comma threes. It's just such a huge improvement over a comma two visually i mean it's just like a real piece of hardware it's super cool so you'll definitely love it if you end up getting a comma three uh yeah the big model will let us see traffic lights um that are currently out of the model box view so you definitely are going to need big model before we can resume from green lights and stuff like that for that reason yeah uh so that's something you know we'll we'll do if it makes sense we'll definitely end up doing yeah, we've, we've spent some time on this already. It's just a matter of you know, going through and making sure that it actually improves things. We don't really want to spend time on it until we've figured out the other bottlenecks. But yes. I think that's going to happen soon. Yeah, I do too. Um, is there any have more questions? Yeah, any last minute questions? Silence. I took some several wrong turns. I think, uh, I think some... oh, we're in Convoy Street. Oh, I'm Chinese. glad you know where we are. <laughs> I'm glad you know where we are. There's no discount code on comma threes. They're extremely limited. We can't offer a discount on them because we don't have any in stock anyway. <laughs> we have some in stock. Buy them now, but uh, you know they're they're very limited. They're very custom, fully custom made. So. They take a lot of effort to build and perfect. And if you're wondering how good the comma threes are gonna be, just think about how good the comma two is now versus when it launched and just extrapolate those improvements for the year and a half, two years, and uh, I mean, hopefully uh, you know, imagining some good things. Yeah, I think people forget what state OpenPilot was in when the, the comma two launched. <laughs> you know, it was like, you know, it kind of worked. There's no end-to-end -end lateral at all. That's all a new development. Uh, it was a lot less reliable. The software's gotten way more reliable. We added auto lane change. That didn't exist when the Comma 2 came yeah, out. Yeah, we got auto lane change. We got... Yeah, the end-to-end -end lateral stuff's really big. It's huge. That was huge improvements. 
as the stability went up so much. Ah, hopefully it'll keep coming. Yes. So, yeah, if you think about that. Phantom braking kind of eliminated that. Yeah. Mostly. Uh, Cut-in detection was also oh, Cut-in detection, yeah. Someone said, open pilot was pretty mad when I got my comma one, or my wave one comma two. It's ridiculously better since then. Exactly. Yes. I'm excited to hear the uh, the list of things we've achieved over the next uh, over the lifetime of common threes as well. Yes. All right. Well, I guess we'll head out. You all can start working on your videos, and uh, yeah, I'll write up a little thing on the Discord that just kind of explains everything in a brief paragraph that you can check out. Um, yeah, for those people asking about reliability, we're going to be writing up a reliability post and uh, doing some content on that. We just need the Comma 3s to be out for a few months, uh, so we have some statistics, but then Adib's going to work on a great reliability post. Uh, but yeah, Comma 3s, you know, they're all new components. Uh, they're all made of very high quality components. You know, no used Chinese phone, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you can extrapolate what I'm saying with that information. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So yeah, we'll see you all. We'll do a live at some point. I mean, we'll definitely see you in two weeks at the very least. Yeah, sounds good. If you guys have any content you want or anything specific uh, you want to know more about that you want us to talk about, please let us know. Yeah. I've got a blog post coming as well that kind of just explains how OpenPilot works in case people want to tinker with it or understand it better. Uh, we'll try to get out more content like that. Yep, and uh, yeah, some more content. You know, we'll do some vision-only ACC content. We'll do some Sonata Long content because it uh, works with OpenPilot now if you have a configuration changed and uh, yeah, more, more lameless stuff. All right. See you guys. Bye.